Hi everyone, it's part of National Careers Week. We're joined by Natalie, who is a sergeant with Northumbria Police. Hi Natalie, thank you very much for joining us this morning. How are you doing? Hi, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Oh, brilliant. It's really good to have you on. We're just really hoping to get an idea of kind of what it's like, sort of life in the police and what your role is and any advice or tips that you might have for current students who are thinking of going into the police. Um, so are you all right to just kind of introduce your role and your job title at the moment? Yeah, I'm Natalie. I work with Northumbria Police and my job title is a sergeant on RPT, which is Response to Policing Team. So if you ring 999, you will get one of my cops, basically. Oh, brilliant. How long have you been in the role for? Uh, the role as a sergeant, I've just been promoted just before Christmas, um, but I've done the role for about two years. I've been what we call temporary promoted into the role. Um, so that's kind of where you're given the position, but you haven't been fully qualified until you go through the promotion process. Um, but a, as a PC, working with Northumbria Police, 15 years in total. Um, joined when I was 25, um, which I think was a nice age. I'd done a little bit of college work before that, done some other roles, um, like different jobs and stuff. And I think it, I came with a good experience. I wasn't kind of too young, which I don't think you can be too young, but I think having a little bit of life experience behind you is good because it can be quite difficult as well. Yeah, I can imagine. So what was your pathway like then? I know you kind of touched on it there. What did you do in terms of kind of qualifications and first getting into the police? We did an application process. And then if you pass the application process, you had to do what's called an assessment centre, which was a day of various tasks, um, like a maths test, English test, um, some role players, and then like a small interview, um, where they were asked like kind of four or five questions. Um, so it was quite like complex and tiring. It was a long day, but you can see why looking back now in the role, why you had to do all those things. Um, but yeah, but, and then once you passed that, you had to do a fitness test and a medical. Went through all of that, you, you got accepted and joined. Oh, brilliant. And do you know if this, is the process quite similar now or has it changed much? It is slightly different. Um, I think possibly COVID as well had a bit of an impact on the initial part of it. Um, I think a lot of it's online now. It's like questions online that you fill in. And then if you pass those, um, you go on to the next process. But it is fairly similar to still medical fitness tests, um, that kind of thing to go through as well. Yeah, oh, Brill. So have you always known that you want to join the police? I didn't, you know, I think like every little girl growing up, I wanted to be a vet or a hairdresser. Um, like I love animals. Um, and I, did, I was massively into horse riding when I was younger and kind of up to like the early 20s. Um, but I didn't, I went to college and then I was going to go to university and kind of left college in a bit of a, a dilemma of what do I do at uni? Um, I looked at a law degree and then I decided to take a year out before I, made, I kind of made the commitment to do it. Um, and in that year, I got a job at the law courts on the quayside in Newcastle. Um, so I kind of got into like the criminal and court aspect of that. Um, and then you obviously have dealings with the police and, and, and things. So, And then one of my friends joined about a year before me. Um, so I'd spoke to her about it for a long time. And then I thought, you know, if I don't give it a go, I'll regret it. Um, so I just, I did it. They were recruiting at the time and I just thought, right, I'm doing it and I've never looked back. <laughs> That's brilliant. I think everything always happens for a reason, doesn't it? And you, it's the kind of people that you stumble across and the things you do that end up shaping where you, where you go, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, um, you know, you just happen to look at the time they were recruiting at the time. I thought, right, it's now or never. Um, but yeah, and I, I think like looking back, I couldn't see myself doing anything else now. That's a funny one, isn't it? You never imagined yourself here, but then you, you can't imagine not being there now. So at random, I couldn't see myself doing anything else but this. Yeah, so oh, weird. that's great. Um, so in terms of a typical day, I imagine every day is a bit different for you, but could you talk us through a day-to-day -day basis, what you'd expect in your role? Yeah, like you said, no day is the same in the police. Um, you're dealing with, I've got a wide range of things, things that I never even imagined the police would be called for. Um, but it's great, like, you know, you go out and help people and it's like a lovely, good feeling at the end of the day when you know you've looked back on your day and you thought, I've helped like all those people today. Um, but typical day in the sergeant role that I do is um, we we'll start off with a, a briefing. So um, myself and my team will have what we call an intelligence briefing. So that's put together by, um, we'll have a, a dedicated intelligence unit. And basically that just puts together important things that might have happened on our days off. Um, burglary targets, so we'll have our kind of regulars um, who commit burglaries in the area and things, so their details will be on there just for, especially for night shifts, if we're out on patrol, um, if we see them in certain areas. 
um, any kind of like important jobs that's happened over the last day or two, um, any people who are wanted to be arrested for offences that we haven't caught up with yet. Um, so we go through all of those and then um, we discuss some jobs we've dealt with, so good jobs and some jobs that maybe we've got some learning from that we didn't do so well. Um, and, you know, and, and I think sometimes the job we do and the jobs we deal with, it's good to kind of talk to each other about it because we can go home and things can kind of dwell on us. And I think because we're saying that we're in the police, we put the uniform on and sometimes think we're invincible, but really we're just human beings underneath it and we're, we think about things and things affect us the same. So sometimes it's good to talk about the jobs with other people who have gone through similar or the same incident with you to, to kind of just make you feel a little bit better, really. Um, and then once we've done the briefing, we allocate, um, I allocate the, the cops to um, like certain areas of our area command. So I work South Tyneside. It's quite a big area command. We cover South Tyneside in Washington. So we allocate cops to certain areas and that's their kind of footbeat for the day. So they'll pick up jobs that come in in that area. Um, and then once I do that, we have quite a bit of paperwork and things to do as well. So we go through the paperwork um, and I, I also manage and we'll have a scene in the police called CNC, which is command and control. So if an incident comes in that needs um, a supervisor to, to take command and control of, I'll go out to the jobs as well and oversee um, the incidents that come in. So I'm just constantly checking the logs and checking the incidents that come in to see what has a high risk and what the cops need to go to first. Um, so it's just quite a busy day, really. It's kind of like blink of an eye and it's over because we're, we're constantly really busy, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. Um, so was there anything about the role that's kind of surprised you? You wouldn't expect when you mm. first went into the police? Just the wide, like I said before, the wide range of um, incidents you deal with. I think everybody sees the police as just arresting the bad guys, um, but it's so much more than that. Um, you're going out and like helping communities daily. Um, you know, you, you've got people who are ringing about um, a dog running on a main road, for example. Um, a lot of mental health, which I didn't realise would be a big part of the job. Um, although we're not mental health professionals, would deal with a lot of mental health and work alongside mental health professions really closely. I think probably every day we'll come across um, kind of a mental health related incident. Um, but yeah, just the, the vast like range of jobs that we deal with, it's not just arresting the bad guys it's so much more than that um I think it's it's you don't realize how much of like an impact you have on people as well you know um you kind of have your regulars who you deal with who who will ring you probably every day and it's sometimes it's for nothing in particular but they don't have anybody else they massively like rely on us to kind of like and it might just be going out and telling them what to do with something but they've got nobody else so like you you don't realize how much of an impact you have on them and how much you're helping them on a daily basis yeah, it's probably like what you're saying that you you probably wouldn't expect that really from the police, would you? You, you do yeah. think of police as going out and arresting people and then and getting back out yeah. there. Yeah, and it's not. Um, but like I say, you just you, you don't you kind of have a lot of skills because you, you you've got mental health side. You, I suppose you're a bit of a social worker to people. You know, your your skills are kind of huge, especially working on the response team because you're the initial responder to everybody ringing the police. You know, you've got all the specialist teams inside the police, which we then will speak to them if it if it's under their umbrella. But at the minute at the minute that job comes in, we go first. So we deal with everything. That's quite a big like responsibility then, isn't it, being the first one? Yeah. I think that's one of the things you probably don't realise when you join. Um, the job the role does come with a big responsibility, but that's nothing to worry about because that's my job as a sergeant and I have my boss who's an inspector who we are there to support you with that so that's not to put anybody off because that's what my job is and we we give people help and advice and you you go through a lot of training which helps with that but yeah you just you do you have a, a lot of responsibility because you're dealing with a lot of different types of incidents. Mm -hmm. So I think that's quite a good one to touch on isn't it because it's probably quite a daunting thing at first I think you're going to join the police and how will you react how will you know what to do do you go yeah. through quite a lot of training before you get started? Yeah, you'll. Um, I mean, it's it's different now. I joined, and I think it was about sixteen weeks. I went through, um, and now the officers who join do a university degree alongside the job, um, which is, is huge because I've never done a degree, but I know there's a lot of work involved in it. Um, but they get allocated time to do that. They go back to university regular for courses and things. The police itself runs a number of courses to help with various things we deal with. Um, so yeah, the training's great. There's nothing that you can't, that you don't, that you deal with, sorry, that you don't 
know about or can't find out about there's always something there to help you even if it's, a, if it's an online course or something you know that you can do yeah oh that's yeah. good to know I think that'll be quite reassuring because I imagine it is quite daunting and you'd, you'd question yourself or whether you you would be able to do it or... yeah there's nothing to worry about in that aspect you get plenty of training and there's always refreshers as well so yeah that, that's nothing to worry about at all Oh, great. That's good to know. Um, you probably already kind of touched on this a little bit, but what would you say is kind of the um, the thing about your job that you enjoy the most? Um, helping people. Like, I know that sounds really kind of like a typical answer that probably a lot of people would say, but there's not many jobs I think that people do where you come into work, you're given a set of car keys and you just go out and about and, you know, and you, and you go out and just help people or have a chat with somebody. I think sometimes the police are portrayed as the bad guys sometimes. I think, you know, and the media doesn't help a lot of the times. But you actually, when you go out and speak to people on the street, people really respect you and like like to see you kind of out on patrol. Um, so you do get a lot of people talking to you and it, it's nice to see, yeah. And But I think helping people and just realising how much of an impact you have on people's lives. And you, at the end of the day, you come home and you think, I've had a good day today and, and somebody will stick in your mind you know someone you might deal with you'll come home and you'll you'll think oh I wonder how they're getting on or you know but it is that a good job satisfaction I think that coming back and just thinking I've, I've helped them today and I hope I've had some kind of like positive impact mm-hmm. oh but that's an amazing feeling to know that you've you've kind of changed yeah. someone's life I helped them like you say it's a massive thing isn't it even if it's just giving them a telephone number for some somebody else you know like if they didn't know where to look for that number what might have happened or what might they have done you know so yeah that is that is a good feeling definitely oh that's great I bet you come across so many different people as well yeah and like you know you get the people who are not so keen on us but I think it I think if you can talk to people in this job I think I always say you know we're given all this um kit like um parva spray and a baton and things but I think as long as you can talk to people, that should very rarely should have to be used. I think in 15 years, I don't think I've ever used either of those things um, because people just want a bit of respect. And I think and it goes both ways. You speak to people how you want to be spoken to in return. Um, mm. You know, and sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you have to step it up a little bit, but that's very rare, I think. I think as long as you're, you're polite and pleasant with people, people are fine. Yeah. yeah. Do you think you found your own way with that then in terms of like dealing with maybe some of the more difficult people you come across? Yeah. And, and like you do have your regulars and sometimes in the difficult people as well, you know, like the people who you do arrest. Um, but a lot of them will be, you know, they'll remember you for being nice, you know, because, you, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, like they think they're great because they're in the police. They've, they've got the powers gone to the head. And like, it, it's not like that at all. Um, I think as long as you speak to them, you can have a good laugh with people. And they'll remember you and they'll wave at you even if you know even though you arrested them last week they'll still kind of give you a thumbs up or a wave in the street sometimes <laughs> um yeah it, it, it's fine I think as long as you just have a bit kind of banter with people really yeah um, it makes a big difference doesn't it? definitely great so just thinking back to kind of when you were in school or when you were starting to decide what you wanted to do is there anything yeah. that you wish you knew then that you maybe know now about your career within the police yeah, I think um, people forget that it kind of, you have to work Christmas sometimes. Um, you know, you, you will miss sometimes family birthdays or family occasions because I think sometimes people will join and then think, oh, I've got to work Christmas Day. But yeah, like we don't give anybody, like we don't give the criminals Christmas Day off, you know, as much as it would be nice. Um, yeah, we have to be at work 24-7. Um, so night shifts, you know, I think those kind of things you don't even think about. You just think about the exciting side of the job. And then when you actually join, you think, oh, I've got to work Christmas day or I have to work during the night. You, you forget about those things, um, but you just get used to that. And if you don't have to work every Christmas day, it's just when your shift is is rotted to do so. But that is one of the things I probably wish I'd thought about. Not that it would have changed my mind, but yeah. you just don't realize the impact it can have on missing a family birthday or something. Yeah, definitely. Although it's all good uh, to kind of speak about the great parts about the job and why you'd want to join the police. I think it's also good to give that realistic insight as well, isn't it? And actually, yeah, yeah. it's 24-7, isn't it? The police just doesn't stop. So, yeah, you know, and you've got annual leave you can take. So, you know, you might not miss a birthday, but sometimes if there's something going on where they need more officers than a normal day, 
you can have your day off cancelled and things so you don't think about those when you join so I think that would just be something I wish I was more aware of I think when I signed up yeah well, I think that's a really good one um and then with that is there any tips you would give anyone who is considering a career in the police definitely speak to somebody who's already doing the job if you've got any family members or um, any of your friends have a family member who's doing the role definitely like have a chat with them and just see what they do day to day because there's brilliant brilliant sides to the police and a lot of it is really good work and you know good days but there is some really sad things you see um and like i said before things that probably any of your friends or family who don't do the job will never see in their lifetime so it probably is a good idea to get a bit of an insight into that um but you as bizarre as it sounds you be kind of you do become used to it um as weird as it sounds but at the same time like i said before as well we're only human under the uniform so you know some people will find things more difficult than others so i think it's good to have a chat with somebody if you know somebody um just to get a good insight into what we actually do day to day yeah i think that's a really good one like you see you do think the police has been invincible don't you but actually you just yeah. real people you know if you do have a particularly bad day i know you said you you try and all kind of speak to each other who was on the same job is there anything else in terms of like support you get if there's something particularly difficult that you see or you work with absolutely um we've got what we we'll call um like trim practitioners who are for like um incidents of, of like any kind of trauma related or anything like that who will um speak to you we've got the police federation who offer counseling services there's lots and lots of support there so again that's not something that you, to put anybody off because the help and support you've got is great um there's you know there's always something that we can refer you to or you can speak to someone you can speak to um yeah so that that's that's really really good and, the, and from that side of it you, you've got, always got help and always got someone some support and someone to speak to oh that's good to know I think like you say it is a it's a difficult one isn't it I think about the things that you might see or you might go through but and know yeah. that support's there and makes a big yeah, difference yeah definitely like you don't realize sometimes what kind of things you do with or what you might come across but the support's always there for you and yeah that's um that's really a positive side from the police as well yeah oh brilliant well I think um yeah just to reiterate that point that you, you made Natalie that it's really important to speak to people who have already been in the police and and they've got that experience it's definitely a, a good idea before you actually start and kind of progress into that into that role yeah. um for anyone who is considering the police we do have workshops this evening at college with our uniform services team and definitely point you in the right direction of, of people who are currently in the police as well to help out with that um, but that's been really helpful hopefully it's been useful for everyone listening and definitely get in touch if you do want any more advice or any more contacts um, but yeah that's been brilliant thank you Natalie thank you see you later